printing press, I think, and they managed to, to stop it. And they got to him and, and they strangled him to death. They strangled him to death because he wanted to translate the Bible into something that he can understand. And just before he died, a day before he died, he prayed a prayer and he said, God, please open the eyes of the King of England. And about a hundred years later, there was a king named King James. And he issued a translation called the King James Version, King James Bible. Now, William Tyndale never got to see that day. He never got to see the king doing that. But he laid down the foundations, didn't he? There was a lot of progress. There was also pain. There was also pain. And we have to understand that we go by God's watch and not our watch. Do you trust the future? Do you trust that God is the sovereign, that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus? He's totally in control. He's the sovereign. And lastly, the final point is know that God saves. It's God who saves. He's the one who's faithful in total control, uh, who's with us, and He does all the heavy lifting. He does all the heavy lifting. You see this at the end of the chapter. At the end of the chapter, <clears throat> Genesis 15, verse 17 to 18a. Uh, now, a bit of context. In their culture, when you wanted to make a covenant, with someone, a promise, what you'd do is you'd lay uh, sacrifices one side there and another side there, and you'd walk between the pieces of dead animals. And that was your way of saying, okay, I've made a promise, cross my heart, hope to die, I'll walk through those pieces. Now, if I don't hold up to the end of my bargain, what is going to happen to me? I'm going to die like those animals. So, God, we'll see in this passage, when the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Now, question, who went through the pieces? Was it Abraham? Did God say, all right, go, you, you walk there. If you walk it, then, then we'll have some sort of covenant. And if you break it, it's off. No. Did, did they both walk it? You know, Islam has this idea, you know, God says, oh, I'll take a step forward. Now it's your turn. You take a step forward. Okay, now I'll go again. No, that's not what happened either. On that day, God made a covenant with Abraham. It was God only who went through the pieces. And God is saying, this covenant will happen. It will work because I am behind it. I am the controlling force behind it. I will make it happen. Now, us on mission, we need to know that God does all the work. He'll prepare hearts in His time. He'll prepare hearts in His own way. It may not happen in our lifetime. It may happen in a few generations. And we see through Abraham believing in God, we see that ultimately through Abraham comes Isaac and then Jacob and 12 sons happen. And one of those sons is Judah. And from Judah comes this guy called David. And from David's leading all the way down comes this guy called Jesus Christ. And it's through Jesus that all offspring are blessed. And Jesus, he does all the work. It's through Jesus that the offspring is blessed. It's through Jesus that all nations will be shining stars for God. It's through Jesus that our problem of sin will be dealt with. It's through Jesus that we obtain salvation and the promised land of heaven and a new kingdom. It's through Jesus that our whole lives change and we have new hearts, new desires, new person in life, purpose in life. Jesus does all the work. It's not about you walking past the pieces. It's Jesus He's the one who did it. He's the one who holds up this covenant. And again, this is the big difference between religion and Christianity. Religion says it's all about what you do. You have to do this and this and this. Don't do that. Pray five times a day. 
or you have to do all these different pillars, you've got to walk to Mecca. No. Christianity says it's all about what Jesus has done. It's not based on how much faith you have in yourself. It's based on what Jesus has done. That's why I want to say this passage again. Romans 4. Just read this passage again. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Fully convinced that God was able, was able to do what he had promised. It's not based on Abraham. It's not based on someone else. It's not based on how much faith he has. It's not based on how much prayer he does. It's not based on if he obeys God or not. It's based on God. It's based on what God can do. On his ability. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. I love this bit. But the words, it was counted to him, were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. Isn't that great? It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespass, and raised for our justification. So this promise, it's for us too. How do we believe in this promise? Exactly the same way as how Abraham believed. As we look in Exodus, you'll see how this covenant works. You'll see that God pursues Israel. Israel is stubborn. They're stiff-necked. They want to go back to Egypt, but God continues pursuing them. He's faithful. He's with them. He protects them. He's sovereign. He's totally in control. And he's the one who does the saving. He's the one that does all the great heavy lifting. This is our God. This is our God. And on mission, we must start with the character of God. Forget about yourself for a moment. Know God. Trust in Him. Know His character. Know that He is in control. Know that He came down in the person of Jesus and died for our sins on the cross and three days later rose for our salvation, conquering Satan, sin and death. Wonderful God, isn't it? Totally in control. And we have to be reminded that He's with us, that He's faithful, that He's sovereign, and He saves. And by God's grace, we pray that we can preach this great gospel about God. And for God to save some. To give them light and the knowledge of salvation. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we are not God, but you are. Thank you that we are not in control, because if we were in control, we wouldn't know what to do. Thank you that you are totally in control. Lord, thank you that we don't need to put our trust in someone else. We don't put our trust that someone else can protect us. Thank you that you are the one who protects us. You're the one who does all the heavy lifting. You're the one who is amazing. And Lord, we pray on mission leading up to mission that we get to know who you are we get to know your character that you're merciful that you're compassionate that you're loving that you're just that you're holy and that you're glorious but we pray that we can give you glory and not ourselves glory we pray lord that we can explain the gospel powerfully to people knowing that it's not just our words that matter it's our life that matters as well Lord, pray that we don't just talk about the gospel, but we walk the gospel. Lord, we pray that we can be confident with the word, be truthful, not to water it down. We pray, Lord, that we can be gentle as well, to love them, to serve them, to help them, to look after them, to understand them, to listen to them. We pray, Lord, by your grace, that you can pierce some hearts on mission. 
We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen.